Wrestling fans, are you ready? Yes! 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 For the thousands in attendance and the millions watching around the world, uh, let's get ready to rumble! Now, please welcome at this time your hosts, Graham GSM Matthews and RJ Marceau. You're listening to the next era of wrestling radio. This is Wrestle Rant Radio. Here in Russell Rate Radio for Thursday, March 14th, 2024. Mr. Marceau joining me here today, near hours removed from Dynamite in Boston. Big business. I was there in attendance. Voice still a little shoddy from that. Might be sleeping on the streets right now, and you have no idea, Mr. Marceau. What's going on? I'm doing good. How are you? <laughs> I'm I'm recovering from the miraculous not miraculous, I'm not gonna lie. The Mercedes Monet return debut last night, whatever you want to call it. Cool moment. Didn't lose my voice from that, quite frankly. But it was a long night. It was actually a really, really good show. I'm going to be asking you a lot about it here today. We'll start with Raw first. Before any of that, though, you can check on new episodes of the show every single Thursday. WrestleRant.com, WrestleRantRadio.com, iTunes, Spotify, TuneIn Radio, uh, iHeartRadio, Google Podcasts, Podbean, Pandora, and Amazon Music. Find the show, rate the show, subscribe to the show. Never miss a new episode every single Thursday. Uh, so, Mr. Marceau, a lot to get into here today. Like I said, big business, big show last night from AEW. I do want to save that for the second half of the show. Uh, kind of give you my thoughts on being there live, your thoughts watching from home, thoughts on Monet, um, some really, really good stuff I thought throughout the show. They really packed a lot of stuff into those 90 minutes. Raw, I thought, was a great show on Monday night as well. They did a great job of setting the stage for WrestleMania, giving some good action, Great promos. Uh, so two shows I was really happy with on Monday and on Wednesday. Before that, though, real quickly, I do want to get your quick thoughts that since we last spoke, new inductees announced for the WWE Hall of Fame. So I already asked you about Paul Heyman, who they announced about a week and a half ago on the Monday of last week. They announced Bull Nakano on Wednesday of last week. So they've been announcing new inductees on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. And they give it to kind of the bigger, the bigger outlets. They break the news. And um, that's kind of how they... Make the announcement of who's going into the Hall of Fame this year. So we had Heyman, we had Nakano. I already asked you about them last week. Since then, they announced the U.S. Express, Barry Windham and uh, Mike Rotunda. They're going in. They were a part of WrestleMania One. They walked in as tag team champions, so that's the kind of the connection there as to why they're going in this year. On Monday, they announced Muhammad Ali. Didn't save for the celebrity wing, but I assume that's the implication. I don't know if Triple H is doing away with that sort of thing. There was talk they might be bringing back the legacy wing which is when they induct people that probably in their minds wouldn't get their own induction, but they do want to induct them still, so they kind of just flash a bunch of names on the screen, which is lazy, but it's better than nothing, I suppose. I, I don't know if they're still bringing that back, but they announced Ali. They announced Thunderbolt Patterson yesterday. Um, not overly familiar with his work, so I'm going to ask you about that in a moment. And then also, I think I told you before we went live here, I think Leah Maya Via, the Rock's grandmother, um, an ex-promoter in wrestling, is also going in. That was rumored about a week ago from Fightful. I think that was confirmed last night by Dave. I think they gave the scoop to him, actually, to um, Wrestling Observer Live Radio or whatever, and they broke that news yesterday. And there might still be one more name to go in, which I'll ask you about in a moment. But of the names that they announced, U.S. Express, Thunderbolt Patterson, Liam Maivia, and um, Muhammad Ali, your thoughts on the latest inductees into the WWE Hall of Fame Class of 24? Yeah, I mean, I feel like it's kind of a mixed bag of group of people. I mean, Muhammad Ali, I mean, besides WrestleMania 1, I don't think you really had too much else involvement in wrestling, I don't think, right? I don't think so. I know he was a big wrestling fan. And also, I mean, I think they covered this on a dark side of the ring or something. He had a very big match, fight, whatever you want to call it, with um, Gorilla Monsoon. Not in WWE, but it was like a big marketed fight and at some point, maybe in the 90s? No, not in the 90s. It was, Monsoon was dead by that point. It must have been in the 80s or 70s. They had like a fight in Japan or something, too. That was a pretty big deal. I don't oh, think yeah, it was... I thought he fought in Oki. What did I say? You said, you said Gorilla Monsoon. I, don't, I think it was Antonio Noki. 
Yeah, I think, um, I, maybe it was, I feel like he did something with Monsoon. No, you're right, I think it was Inoki. Maybe Inoki fought Monsoon, too. Maybe that's what I'm thinking of. No, I'm sorry, you're right, it wasn't yeah, Tony Inoki, though. You're right. So I think they had, like, some MMA boxing things. So, yeah, besides that and WrestleMania, one out. I mean, like, so the celebrity ones, it's not like, I feel like they kind of show up once and they just get a induction. Um, the U.S. Express, don't know a ton about them. I know it's Bray Wyatt's father and uncle, I think, mm-hmm. right? Yep. And like I said, they wore out WrestleMania 1 and won the belts and retained. Um, I mean, not that I have this big striking list, but I feel like there are other teams that should get in before them. But like I said, this thing's not like the most prestigious thing of all time. Uh, Thunderbolt Patterson, like I said, I don't know too much about him. I know he was kind of made his name in like Florida in like the 70s. I don't know a ton about him, but I know he wrestled in Florida um, and kind of like made his name there. Um, so I feel like that's like a good old, like I said, like kind of like a legacy um, induction. And then Leah Maivia, I mean, I don't, I know, all, all I know about her promoting is some Young Rock, and it seems like that's not factually correct. So mm-hmm. um, I, I, I don't know too much about her either. But uh, I mean, they're kind of smaller inductions, but uh, I mean, it's nice to see other people get in, so. Yeah, the Patterson one kind of surprised me, not just because I'm not overly familiar with his work. He was obviously, from what I understand, uh, from what people had said on, I mean, dot, dot .com is the full article on his induction, but I saw plenty of other people saying on Twitter, like, why he was worthy and stuff like that. Um, a trailblazer, especially especially for black wrestlers at that point in time, and the NWA and stuff like that, uh, you know, quite a while ago. Um, he's obviously since passed, I, I think, I believe. I could be I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure he has since passed on. So I, I think that might be a pompous induction. I know Ali obviously passed away about 10 years ago. I'll check on Thunderbolt Patterson. But what surprised me about that was that um, it's not the Legacy Wing, which is great. I mean, like I said, they usually, for the Legacy Wing, they just announce a bunch of names, and they're like, yeah, here's who's going in. And, um, you know, they don't really typically give a shit. And, uh, you know, they never really, they don't really make a big deal about it, and they're technically a part of the Hall of Fame without actually getting an actual induction. But they're not doing that with him. And I just checked. Thunderbolt Patterson is still alive, actually. So he will be there in person, I would imagine. Um, he is 82 years old. So um, that's that's pretty cool. But I think there's one more name left. I think it's safe to say you mentioned the U.S. Express and that being Bray Wyatt's father and uncle. Yeah, they were a part of WrestleMania 1. They did have some success in WWE and other territories. I do agree there are other teams that should go in ahead of them, specifically Demolition. I mean, the fact they're not in is fucking ridiculous at this point. Hopefully next year. Um, but I would have to think that Bray Wyatt's dad, not solely for this reason, but he's going in because part of the reason is Bray is probably also going in. I, I saw that list that was floating around the other day from Reddit, and all the names that were rumored for the Hall of Fame ended up being, every single one ended up being completely correct. And the only name on there that has not been announced yet is Bray Wyatt. So I think it's safe to say Bray Wyatt will probably be announced tomorrow, and then they'll flash the graphic on screen during SmackDown. That would be my guess. Yeah, no, I, I think it makes sense, like you said, especially with his dad getting in. Especially with this tragic passing last year, I think it makes a lot of sense to put him in this year. Yeah, no, definitely. I think the only um, thing kind of preventing it, if anything, was the family maybe saying, hey, just it's too much too soon to be doing that. As far as, like, I mean, they have to go there and talk about it and stuff like that. So, I mean, if they, if they are indeed going through it, the more power to them, but... Um, I suppose, like I said, we'll probably find out tomorrow because they announced all the other ones on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. So uh, tomorrow's Friday, so I guess we'll find out then. I would have to. That, that, that's my guess. Um, transitioning to Raw from Monday Night, like I said, I thought it was a really, really good show. Some really good matches. Some great focus on the women's division. Love the main event, WrestleMania build. That was really well done. Uh, they have since made the tag team match official. We talked about that last week. Rock and Roman versus Cody and Seth. You had Seth and Cody, or Seth and Drew, rather, talking about it on Monday night. Do you think, not that they're spreading Seth too thin, but do you think they're doing an effective job of having him, you know, split his time between the Drew stuff and the tag team build? I mean, I feel like this is part of the reason why Cena's have rumored to have a role at WrestleMania, which I'll get back to in a second, but, you know, people have said maybe he can replace Seth, or Stone Cold Steve Austin, which I don't really think is all that likely, but I guess you never know. Um, your, your thoughts on how they've split the time so far with Seth and his feud with Drew, and then also him feuding with the Bloodline at the same time? Yeah, I mean, like you said, he's kind of all over the place, but I think, like, storyline-wise, he's kind of, like, letting his guard down on Drew more than 
than he should be, and I think that's what's ultimately going to cost him the belt at Mania. So I think, like, could he, obviously, in a normal build, would I want him and Drew to be built up more? Yes, but, like, I also think the story is, like, he's more focused on Rock, Roman, with with Cody, and then he's kind of, like, Drew's just kind of there, and like, at the end, that's what's kind of going to be, like, his downfall. So I don't hate it. Like I said, if it was a normal build just for them, too, I'd be like, okay, what are they doing? But with another match, like, kind of, like, playing into the story, I think it makes sense. They're kind of, like, downplay it as the way it's kind of been unfolding on Raw. Yeah, no, I think it's part of the story. I think they've done a good job of it so far. I know Rockin made the comment in that promo to Seth on Friday Night SmackDown that, oh, I'm going to take that, I could take that World Heavyweight Championship from you in an instant, blah, blah, blah. Probably not him actually, but, like, him as a boss, he could say, like, you know, I could have someone beat you for it, or I could just strip you of it, whatever. Uh, so it kind of got a lot of people talking, like, maybe he could be referring to Damian Priest. So, like, let's say Seth beats Drew, which I think would be very dumb. I mean, I know Drew hasn't resigned yet, but... That could also just be a work, and he's already resigned, and we just don't know, whatever. Um, but I think there's a pretty, you know, decent chance that Seth could win, and then Rock's way of taking the title from Rollins is having Priest cash in in that moment and taking the championship from Rollins. Do you think there's any chance of that happening? There's a chance, but I don't like it. <laughs> I want Drew. At this point, Drew should win. Um, Drew lost again. You might as well just leave because you'd just be a grade-A loser at this point. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I, I, I definitely agree. I do want Priest to cash in successfully. Don't get me wrong. If he were to cash in a Mania, that'd be great. But, you know, even him cashing in the same way that Seth did 10 years ago, mid-match and whatever, I mean, yeah, I could see the irony there. I just really want Drew to walk out the new World Heavyweight Champion. Uh, Damien, we do know what he's doing at WrestleMania. They have confirmed his role at the show on, I don't know if they said what night, but it's going to be Judgment Day defending the undisputed WWE Tag Team Titles in a six-pack challenge ladder tag team match. What a fucking mess this is going to be. So they've announced qualifiers for next week. I think it's going to be the Creeds against DIY, Veer and uh, Sangha, who just randomly resurfaced out of nowhere, facing Awesome Truth, and uh, New Day versus Alpha Academy. And then I would imagine the other two spots would go to two SmackDown teams. So, um, yeah, I mean, listen, I think it's it, it's going to be a great match, I'm sure. Because that sounds like it's going to be awesome. That's a lot of people in the ring at one time. Uh, it, it's their way of getting everyone on the card and you know, getting New Day on the show and DIY and all this other sort of stuff. I still feel like it should have been Awesome Truth 2 on 2 because that's where the real story is right now is with Awesome Truth and Judgment Day. But what are your thoughts on the newly made match with the Tag Team Titles for Mania? I hope it's sponsored by Home Depot or Lowe's. They're, they're playing their cards right, but... Uh... Not to be a smart ass, but Jesus Christ. Um, <laughs> like you said, I think realistically it should be them versus Truth and Miz one on one. But like people have been talking about it, which I could totally see. One team grabs one set of belts, another team grabs another set of belts, and that's yeah. how they split the belts. Mm-hmm. I mean, I guess, but like I said, I don't need the Home Depot six man pack challenge ladder clusterfuck to get to that point. But uh, I guess. That's for again, so it's not my my cup of tea. But like I said, we'll get a lot of action, and like I said, hopefully Home Depot or Lowe's is ponying up. That's at least twelve people in the ring at one time. Because when they said a multi-team match at Mania, I'm thinking, okay, they're gonna have a gauntlet. They're gonna have like something along those lines, like a four match, like a fatal four way. Which you know, to be fair, I mean, at least this is a different idea than what they've done before. So they're not doing a tournament. They're not doing a gauntlet. We've seen all of that stuff quite a lot in the last you know year or so in WWE. It is something different that we have not seen at Mania or just in general in WWE in a while. Ladder matches we see constantly. I made comments about that every time they've done it. But at the same time, though, it should be quite a wild spectacle match, but they just do this shit all the time where it's hard to kind of care about the stipulation. But I do think you're right, though. I forgot to mention that people were saying that maybe the reason why this is a ladder match is so that two teams can walk out champions. And that could, you know, R-Truth maybe takes down the Raw Tag Team titles and then DIY could grab the SmackDown Tag Team titles. There's a couple different ways that they can go about it. Do you think that the division on both brands is deep enough to justify them going back to having two sets of tag titles? For me personally, I think so. But what do you think? I think they're getting there. So I don't hate like trying to like then split it and then get there. I think they do have a decent amount of teams on both shows. Are they like amazing, credible teams? No, but 
I think they have enough that you can make it work and then hopefully keep building on it. So that's why I don't like overly hate the idea. Yeah, no, exactly. I mean, I think they can kind of build off of what they already have. Raw is a lot of teams. It doesn't mean that every team matters necessarily, but I do think they have a lot of teams, and I think they can make it work with, you know, going back to two sets of tag titles. Because when they had first unified them, I think it was two years ago, but even years before that when the rumors were still swirling, they might unify the tag titles and, you know, create one set of belts. The division was terrible. I mean, they didn't even really defend those titles as it was. It was like New Day and then maybe like two or three other teams, but... If they're going to really enforce the brand split, then it kind of makes sense to have two sets of titles. Or at the very least, at the very least, create one set of tag title belts. But I feel like they haven't done that because they don't know if they're going to have um, two titles going forward. So I guess we'll find out at WrestleMania. That's a pretty likely scenario. Um, the first match on the show saw Becky Lynch took, take on Liv Morgan, rekindling their rivalry from a few years ago. And I thought they did a really good job of having a great competitive match. Um, Liv, I don't see her factoring into this match at Mania. I know she's been feuding with Becky and Rhea and whatever, Nia, for the last couple of weeks since coming back. And she's been in a pretty prominent spot on the show. I don't really see where she ends up on the card now because they haven't really done a WrestleMania Women's Battle Royal in a few years. So, like, the men have the Andre Battle Royal for whatever that's worth, which is nothing, obviously. But, um... With that one, at least they do that on the SmackDown before. They don't. They haven't done a WrestleMania Women's Battle Royal in quite a long time. So I don't know where Liv ends up, but I thought she had a really good showing here, and they did a great job of uh, making her look credible in defeat, I thought, before having her kind of stare down with Rhea Ripley afterward. And the great promo from Becky Lynch to Rhea and vice versa, I thought they had a really strong exchange after the match. All of this to say that I think with every passing week, I feel like there's an increasingly good chance that Becky could lose at Mania and Rhea retains. I mean, it's hard to kind of see... I mean, I guess you could do Rhea and Liv for without the championship on the line, but I just think Rhea could retain and you have a whole bunch of new feuds with people from SmackDown if they come over in the draft, but specifically Liv Morgan, where I, find, I kind of feel like they have to tie up that loose end at some point if they keep mentioning it. Um, but yeah, your thoughts on Becky and Liv from Raw and also the idea of Liv, maybe her shot of getting uh, her hands on Rhea Ripley aren't exactly dashed yet. If Rhea could retain at Mania, which I feel like at this point, at, th at this point, might be the best possible outcome. Yeah, I think that's possible. Um, like I said, I thought this was a really good match for them to kick off the show. Um, Liv looked really good, and Becky looked good as well. I thought it was like the perfect match to start the show off. The interaction between them after was good as well. I guess with the whole like, I think like you said, I think as time goes on, there's a better chance Rhea retains. But I just, I mean, Becky's being Liv multiple times now, so. If Rhea can be, I guess, like you said, in storyline, doesn't really, really matter. I think, if anything, it would be like she could face Rhea, like Becky wins, then her and Rhea face off, and like winner gets Becky, and then she could triumph over Rhea, and then triumph over Becky because she hasn't beat Becky yet either. So, mm -hmm. um, but I mean, I guess, like you said, she could also be the one that eventually take the belt off Rhea, but then you also mentioned that with the draft, you could have other people come over as well. So, I mean, I think it really just depends on what they're plan is with Rhea and like that I feel like the judgment days days are not numbered but like I feel like the group's kind of falling apart a little bit so we'll see what happens I think once she loses the belt they'll definitely see a decent split but um I mean I don't hate her retaining I feel like she's probably one of the only people I don't mind if she retains her WrestleMania I would like Becky to get the belt she hasn't had it in a while but uh mm -hmm. like I said I also love I like live a lot as well so I think if it came to Becky not winning, but Liv finally getting her like moment over Rhea, then I'd be fine with that as well. You bring up a good point about the Judgment Day. I mentioned this on Hashtag on Wednesday. As far as their future, um, they've been together for about two years as of Mania. They've obviously added J.D. McDonough as of last year. They added Dominic a little bit later on. But the roots of Judgment Day go back to Mania with Damian Priest being the first person to join alongside Edge at WrestleMania two years ago. Um, it's not that they're getting stale. But I'm not really sure coming out of Mania, even if Rhea retains, I could see there. I feel like they have to drop the tag team titles, do Balor and Priest, so Balor can move on, or Priest can move on and focus on the briefcase and whatever. Um, how do you see that breakup going about? Like, is it a matter of Priest going babyface by, you know, cashing in and winning the championship, or Balor costing him the title shot, or whatever it might be, to kind of set forth the feud they were teasing about a year ago with those two? Does Rhea, I mean, Rhea at this point is just an infinitely bigger star as far as, you know, what, what, what they can do with her and stuff like that. Um, you know, they, she doesn't really, she has outgrown her use for the Judgment Day. And they can keep Dom with her because they're a great pairing. But 
I think you're spot on when you say the Judgment Day may not be long for the Raw roster, or just WWE in general. Yeah, like I said, I just think they're kind of like losing their steam. Even Balor Priest, I feel like they were kind of, oh, they were good 1A to Rhea. I feel like now they're kind of like a 2A, 2B. I feel like Dom's more important to her, and I mean, JD's just kind of there. Like, I liked including him, but he's just realistically just been the group flunky, even more than Dom, and he just, I don't know, he just, I don't know. I guess we'll see what happens. They also teased like the whole Andrade thing, so we'll we'll see what happens there. But kind of going back to my point, I think their days are numbered. Once she loses the belt, I think it's just gonna split up them. And then, like I said, I think I don't know if it's Priest going heel uh, or staying heel and going face or or what. But obviously, once they lose the belt, so they'll definitely add some tension. Then he'll have the briefcase. So I think, like you said, maybe Balor will turn on him because he has the briefcase and he has nothing. I'm not quite sure, but I just think before before long, the, the group will be will be done, pretty much. Yeah, no, I think so as well. Um, you, you mentioned the Andrade thing, and uh, I mean, again, I, I could also see a scenario, before I move to the Andrade thing, I could see a scenario of what you mentioned as far as, maybe, maybe they can go to SmackDown together. I mean, I, I could see them getting drafted, all of them, to SmackDown, because they've been a raw group for the past two years. Maybe they get some fresh opponents on that show, have one more feud with who, I mean, I'm not really sure, but SmackDown, it seems like they have a million stables. Uh, we've already seen them in the LWO, maybe the Bobby group, I don't really know, but you know, I, I don't need to see Rhea Ripley and B-Fab in the ring one-on-one, but maybe we could see, you know, them move to SmackDown, and that's where the split happens, but I don't know if there was a use for uh, at least Rhea to be part of the group for much longer beyond Mania, in my opinion. But what do you think the Andrade thing is leading to? Because someone had asked me, oh, do you think Andrade's trying to... Uh, you know, team with Dom or be a part of the group. I don't think that's the case at all. I think it's just more of a case that they're going to set up Dom as a future opponent for Andrade. But is it just on Raw, or is that a Mania match? Like, could that be... I I feel like the Mania card, I don't have every projected match in front of me. But I feel like it's a pretty stacked card, or it will be on both nights, that I'm not sure if they have another room for another random match that... I mean, they've been building to it subtly in backstage segments. But it's not like Andrade and Dominic is this big marquee match. Um, they might want to get Dominic on the card. Andrade just resigned, so he doesn't have to just be in the fucking Andre Battle Royal. What are your thoughts on uh, that being a potential match for WrestleMania? I don't hate it, but like I said, I guess like how's it going to get there? They seem like they're aligned, or there's some kind of friendship. So it's like how yeah. are they going to get to the point of them facing? I guess we still have almost a month left, but uh, I mean I don't hate it. It is kind of random. But like you said, I also think they want to get Dom on the car just for the booze, and I mean, Andrade just resigned, so it'd probably be nice to get him on WrestleMania. It's not like it's a definite necessary thing. Like just like maybe it's gonna be like their raw like Spanish like Latino match because SmackDown's easily gonna have Ray and, and Santos. So mm-hmm. I don't know. I feel like they like to do one what one time does the other side does as well. So maybe that's what we'll get on one. I don't really hate it. I mean, I don't think it's going to be like this long barn burner, but like I said, it gets Dom will get the heat and maybe help shine Andrade a little bit more than they've already done. So, I mean, it's not necessary, but with two nights, it's not like I'm clenching my fist in anger. Yeah, no, as long as they have a spot for him, it's not going to go 15 minutes, I wouldn't think. I would imagine probably 5 to 10, gives Andrade a win, gets Dom on the show. I mean, he had a great match with Ray last year, arguably almost stole the show if they didn't just outright steal the show in night one. Um, you know, they might want to get him back on the show in an in-ring role, because even if he didn't wrestle, I assume he would have a role on the show either in the tag team match or Rhea's match or something, so he can have a match of his own. Not rushing to see J.D. McDonough in the ring at WrestleMania, but Dominic being on the card makes sense, specifically against Andrade. Um, Another development in the women's division that we saw on Monday night, got to get your thoughts on this, because I don't think we've discussed this yet, was the uh, Candice and Indy tag team match with Maxine Dupree and Ivy Nile. So the match was nothing, obviously, and Candice has been teasing, getting frustrated lately with all the raw, uh, with all the losses that she and Indy have been racking up, dating back even before Elimination Chamber. They have not won in a while. They, they finally did win here, but only after Candice confronted Maxine in the corner mid-match. The crowd heard none of this, which, I mean, that doesn't really bother me. It kind of seems more realistic as opposed to her grabbing a fucking microphone and then going off on her that way. That'd be dumb. But she, she corners her in the corner of the ring. And she just kind of goes off about how this is why the crowd boos you, because you're terrible. You have no idea what the other women in the back are saying about you. And then she goes all Randy Orton 06, or fucking, um, 
Who is there was definitely another instance. I know Christian Cage obviously recently in AEW, but there was definitely another one. Eddie Guerrero with Orton, maybe Batista. Did Batista make an Eddie comment? I think it was either Batista or someone else that was like, Eddie's "Oh, dead. yeah." Was it Batista too? I know Batista Orton did. said Eddie's dead. Okay, he did. He did. Okay, I I thought he did, but I'm trying but to remember. Was the one that said that he was in hell. Yeah, that yeah, yeah, so... <laughs> yeah. So I mean, we've talked about that line before and how. Dumb that was, and that was right after he died too. Um, I so again the the match itself was whatever, but I do want to get your thoughts on the angle itself, not whether it was tasteful or not, but like it was pretty. Po- I didn't watch the show live; I caught up after the fact, and I saw a lot of people say they really liked it, which the, is the camp that I fell in personally. But I also saw a lot of other people say it was dumb, forced, unnecessary, gross, whatever. So, like, where, where, where did you fall on that line as far as, did you think it was forced and stupid and unnecessary, or do you think it was uh, a nice change of pace? So, I don't hate the line, per se. I hate who it was said to. Okay. If it was that? someone that has a future, like, if that was something someone said to, like, Tiffany Stratton, fine. I think she's going to be a star anyways, and it's going to, like, motivate her get her a little bit more going okay with me i don't like don't know her personally probably i don't know maybe save small orphans on the weekends i have no idea but <laughs> she is an awful wrestler that's all i know she could be the nicest person out there but i just think she's so bad that like i i, I just don't know if it's the right person to do this with because like i feel like doing that it's like supposed to like bump them up and, like people oh it's like get the people behind her but like at the end of the day it's not like she's gonna become like Frank Gotch overnight like she's not good in the ring so it's gonna take like it's not like she has like any I don't even think she has like any potential that's even the worst part like I don't think she's meant to be a wrestler unfortunately it's not meant for everyone um but I just think I don't think the lie itself was bad but if it was someone that had potential I think it would have been like oh people get behind her I just don't think people are gonna get behind her because she's just not good in the ring I could see what you're saying so you're saying that it, the, the the attempt to kind of get her over and this whole like oh your brother's dead thing and the sympathy that she's bound to get from this from the audience is being wasted on her I mean obviously you're not going to use that line for someone else if it's not true because this is obviously a true story and she was not talking true. about well, like I, said, I just yeah. don't think she it's the right person because I think even if the front crowd gets behind her they're going to get older her quick because she's just not good in the ring because she has a short shelf she's life not in this role yeah. exactly okay I can understand that. I think it's worth the shot. Like, I'm not... They did that with, like, Indy Harwell. Indy Harwell, it's like, okay, like, she has potential. Like, she's young. I feel like she has, like, the potential to become a... Like, she has the potential to become a star. Maxine's, like, bingo hall level wrestling. Like, she's, like, training school. Like, she's not good. I, I honestly don't know why... I don't know. Like I said, she could be really nice. She hears us. I don't want to take it personally. I want people to tweet at me and <laughs> get mad. Like, the people boot her and shit. It's just the truth. I, I mean, I think they could have used this, like I said, maybe not the same verbiage, but she's not the right person to, like, get the fans behind because I don't think she's good enough to back up the sympathy. No, that, that's an interesting point, and I don't think you're necessarily wrong either because we didn't talk about the uh, video that went viral among wrestling fans a few weeks ago. That was the week I didn't talk to you, I think, on, on the phone for the show. But the whole Maxine Dupree thing and how she got booed, and I don't know if it was just one person or if it was multiple people at that house show. And they said, you suck. Would I have done that personally? No, probably no. not. I would not have done that. Um, do I think it's that big of a deal? No, I don't. And I know no. you feel the same way. Exactly. I mean, it's a fucking, it's it's wrestling. Again, as other people have said, if it was something sexist or just disgusting, like if someone in the crowd had that said something, like what Candace said in storyline, then yeah, that's fucking gross. I mean, that goes for any female on the roster, male on the roster, doesn't matter the gender it doesn't really hardly matters at all because i had also seen the comment from a lot of uh the hardcore fans uh, hardcore uh you know uh, women's wrestling fans they just i'm like no i'm not saying everyone's i'm not generalizing here but there were certain comments that i saw like oh they would never do this to the men i'm like i mean I, where were you in the territory days <laughs> i mean it definitely was <laughs> where were you when they literally eddie Guerrero died or anyone told them that he was a hell not heaven like Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, I'm talking about I'm talking about the booze that she got at the house show. Um, Dude, people boo people all the time. It's just I've been to plenty of house shows or wrestling shows that people are like legitimately I don't know when there was a room 
Karen, there's plenty of terrible people, and people boot them and say, you suck. Yeah, no, exactly. I mean, it depends. Like, so would I personally do that? Would I personally do that to the guys or female talent? No, because that's not who I am. But I don't know some people want to voice their opinion, so that's their prerogative. Yeah, I mean, again, it's all within a certain extent. But if we're just talking about booze here and saying you suck, I mean, that's pretty basic level wrestling training school stuff. I mean, I honestly don't even really know. The whole thing is, I know she responded to it and she appreciated the support. It's not even like she had come out, because I'm not even blaming her either, because it's not like she had come out and said, oh, this really hurt my feelings. People just kind of interpreted that based on her reaction as she walked to the back. She said nothing about it. Um, you know, maybe she was legitimately bothered, but I think she also knows. I mean, she hasn't been wrestling for that long, which she probably even knows that, listen, this shit happens and people have a uh, a right to their opinion. And again, if they want to voice it at a show in the way that they did, that's totally normal. Whether she's a face or heel, it hardly matters. I guess my other question is, um, and I'll get back to the comments that Candice made in a second, but going back to what you just said, have you officially written off Maxine? Like, do you think that she can improve, whether it be with more time in the main roster or putting her back in NXT? You think she's just at a point where she's just not going to be that good? From watching wrestling for t- over 20 years, I think she's done. You think you, you've seen enough? <laughs> I've seen enough. I don't think she'll get any better. I mean, I've seen... She gives me, like... Like I said, I... I, I I, I, like I said, I don't know why they called her up to begin with because I just don't think, one, she's even close to being ready. But two, I just don't think she's going to get any better on the main roster to begin with. I don't think even if you send her back down to NXT, because realistically, if you send her back down to NXT, she's going to probably take up over time or girls that are a lot better than her in the ring and probably are way more interesting. So, I mean, maybe they just called her up, like obviously with the whole ma- maximum male models thing. But, I mean, if she went down to NXT, she'd probably there's plenty of other women down there I mean, I couldn't even... I, there's plenty of women, I can name a ton, that have way more potential and are already better than her. And they're probably younger than her, too. So, oh, no, definitely, I mean, yeah, like yeah. I just... I don't I don't know. Like, I, I don't know if I blame the company more than... than obviously, I don't blame her, because obviously she's not ready. But I just feel like she was, like, called up for the specific reason. And like, oh, we're going to put her in the ring. But, I don't know, it's just... I'm trying to think of other examples. It's just like what the year that they called up all those people for NXT that just like weren't ready, and then they just none of them did anything. It's like I don't know. She gives me like Summer Rae vibes. Like she was not that good in the ring. She never really got good. She never got any better. Eva Marie, same kind of thing. Like never really got better, and they kind of like went fizzled out. Mm-hmm. Very Lana esque. Very Lana esque. There you go. That's the best person I can wow. explain about her. Yeah, no, I I think I think Lana is actually probably the perfect example. I mean, Lana was a manager for a long time before she started wrestling, but with Lana though, I think she was in a pretty similar boat. Even Marie as well, where I think they both improved. To give them credit for what it's worth, I think they both improved from where they were. That's also impossible when you were as bad as they were when they first started, obviously. But I just don't think either of them were really cut out for the ring. Specifically, Lana, I just never really could get into her matches, and she ended up becoming passable by the end of her WWE run in 2020-2021, but she was still not remotely... Like, of all the women that we have right now... I mean, again, if this was maybe 15 years ago, then I think she would have fared well for herself. And I'm not saying now she's going to be awful. 15 years ago when Samantha was Joy Giovanni, she would have fit right in. No, (laughs) and I think she would be better than most of the women they had even then, too. Um, But I just think at a time where you have all of these women, that a lot of whom do not get television time, and are much better than she is in the ring, just objectively. Then I'm not sure um, that she, I mean, I'm not saying she's not worth the time to invest in and see if she can improve. I do think give her all you know, give her more reps and try to make her improve. But as far as pushing her, probably not. To go back to what you said, as far as do this with Alba Fire, do this with someone that has potential. Yeah, I mean, like I mean, obviously you got to find something relevant there. You can't be <laughs> going through the uh, Rolodex of all right. Yeah, you can make stuff up. Yeah, people don't know everything. <laughs> you can make it up. You can't. You got to go through the territory, dude. Uh, Alba, who's who was? Uh, what relative do you have that's dead? Who can we make fun of on the show? You know, I mean, the whole force thing. I listen. I understand because it did kind of come out of nowhere. I was like, holy shit, that didn't really bother me, honestly. Because, and I can't even say like, oh man, this is so forced. And I mean, if you feel that way, that's fine. Everyone's entitled to their opinion. I did not feel that way, mostly because I see it every fucking Wednesday in Dynamite. And I know it's a shtick at this point. I love Christian. I think the stuff that he does is hilarious. But I can't sit here and say, oh, that Christian gimmick is just so funny, and then sit here and tell you, 
Well, the stuff they did on Raw with, with Candice and Maxine is just, that's just disgusting. I mean, how could they even do that? That just came out of nowhere. I mean, it's not like Candice. I mean, she's been teasing the heel turn, and people say dumb things when they get mad. I mean, that seems pretty logical to me. Um, I don't know if I would tell someone that I wish, you know, I'm glad their brother died, but, you know, I've seen some pretty gross stuff in my life, so I'm, I'm not entirely shocked by that. So, I don't know. There was that, too. Like, I, we see it in AEW all the time. It's definitely different, but not different enough to say, oh, it works here, but not here. Um, I don't know. I just that, that didn't really bother me. But I can see what you're saying as far as they're wasting it on her because she's not going to be worth the point. Like, it's not leading to her becoming this yeah, great underdog. Yeah, it's her becoming WWE champion or a star, exactly. No, I can understand that. I, I'm willing to see where it goes. Um, I think there's a pretty good chance that, you know, it ends up being, I mean, it's, it's something, it gives her something to do, it gives Candace something to do. She's done a whole, I think this could obviously benefit. To me, I think it's it's less about Maxine. I'm looking at it this way. I think it's less about her and more about Candace and maybe giving her more heat and getting her more over, hopefully, and kind of giving her something to do. And maybe Indy in the end as well. I don't know. Maybe Indy has a, a dead relative that maybe Candace can become the Christian, Kiva, the Christian Cage of the women's division. I don't know, but... Um, you know, for now I'm, I'm kind of, I'm okay with it. I thought it was a cool angle. We don't see that sort of stuff often in WWE. I don't want people coming out every week talking about their dead siblings that are actually dead. I mean, that's kind of fucked up, but, uh, for this one angle, I, I thought it was fine. So I guess we'll see where it goes. So the other thing that came after that, uh, we saw the Cody Rhodes promo, kind of basic stuff. I thought he cut a really good promo, <clears throat> but the other match I wanted to talk about briefly, cause there really wasn't a lot to it, but the Kabuki Warriors defending the tag team titles against Sheena and Zoe. A decent match. I thought they had a well-worked match, but again, dude, it's been five years. I just don't think anyone cares about these titles. I, I really don't. Um, the crowd just could not have given two shits about the match. They're two heel teams, so you know you can make that argument, I guess, but I don't know. No one really cares. I mean, I guess my bigger question is, what do you think they do with the Warriors and Mania? Is it a case of them defending against Bianca and Naomi or maybe a debuting Jade Cargill? Or do they not defend at Mania at all? I, I just don't want to see another multi-team women match. I feel like that would be an absolute waste. Who gives a shit? Yeah, I mean, I think we've kind of circled the wagons on here. I just, I mean, I just, yeah, I just don't think the belts really work anymore. I will just, before I just dump the belts, I will say I like how the presentation, like they like zoomed in on each team. Like the oh, cameraman yeah. was like yeah. in the ring when they announced them. It was very UFC-esque. So, like the camera was right in their face. I like that. It's like a new small presentation thing, so that's a good. That was the best part of the match, honestly. Um, I like both teams, but like I said both heels. So who's across with the cheer for? I mean, how many chances has Zoe and Shayna gone? They've lost. I mean, I just think that with the belts itself, the teams that they build up, they lose constantly, and then so it's like who? And then it just doesn't work. And I've I I I ink my hat on this. I was the one that said they should have tag team belts. I know my hat's already eaten. I moved on. I'm an idiot. Dumb idea. Let's move <laughs> on. Um, I mean, like people have like people have like proposed like a women's like intercontinental champion. I'm fine with that over these belts. These belts yeah. are useless. No one cares. It's a mix match of people together. Like you said, most of the time it's like two baby face teams versus two baby face teams. Or two heels versus two heels. It, it it doesn't really make sense. It doesn't get anyone else. Old. No one's getting over doing this. No one. The people sit on their fucking hands. I don't blame them. Yeah. Especially when it was like Shayna and Zoe versus I don't know, like Indian Candice. Like literally, you could hear a pin drop. No one gives a fuck. So, mm -hmm. I mean, I think they'll probably defend them in some kind of multi-woman tag match. Not like anyone will give a shit, but I mean. Bianca and Jay, like, what are they going to hold the belts and do nothing with them? I don't know. I, I don't like that idea. So, I think they realistically need to take the belts. Just, just take the L, throw them in the garbage, and just restart. That might be their best bet. I mean, we've said that before, and it's probably fallen on deaf ears. Not that I have any, you know, pull or anything like that. But people have said that before. I think Triple H is one of his uh, worst mistakes. I, I can't even call it a mistake. But when he brought back, you know, when he got creative power about two years ago, he had the ultimate opportunity to trash the tag titles at that point. We just saw the former champions. I mean, Naomi's back in the company now. We just saw the former tag team champion Mercedes Monet, the former Sasha Banks, pop up on Dynamite last night. Her last appearance on the show was as tag team champion. When they got suspended or whatever, it was as tag team champions. And the tag team titles were not seen after that for another three or four months. When Triple H got power and then he crowned new champions. And they've meant even, even the day that he crowned new champions, dude. Raquel and... Dakota beat Damage Control. 
who then beat Raquel and no, what did I say? Dakota, not Dakota. I'm sorry. It was Raquel and Aaliyah. Aaliyah, who's not even in the Joe, company anymore. Mister. They had them beat them for the belts. Maybe there was an injury or something. So, I, we we still don't know. Two years later, but Damage Control beat so them. So I back understand. Belt. So just to jump, I'm not, I'm not trying to jump over it, but like, so this is why I, I I give him credit for trying. Yeah. So here's the difference. I give him credit for trying, but now he has to see that it clearly doesn't work. And they try. I give him. I give you a hundred percent. Yeah, they did. Triple yeah. H, I'll fucking I'll pray and give you a bow down. You tried really hard to get this division over on Raw. They're all over Raw and SmackDown. It doesn't work. Now it's the time to realize it doesn't work. I'm fine with him trying under under his control, but if he doesn't understand it's not working, he's blind. It's been over two years at this point. I mean, if, if that is that enough of a sample size to realize that it's not working? I mean, they got rid of the 24-7 stuff pretty quickly. And again, I could see it being an issue of, you know, we don't want to admit defeat here with these belts. And also, <clears throat> you know, it's another opportunity for the women, and they don't want to have less titles for the women. It's kind of, I mean, to an extent, they kind of do because they got rid of the NXT women's tag titles, which was the right move to make. I mean, they did that. The thing here, though, is that, like, I completely agree, though. It's not a case of them getting rid of a championship. It's just getting rid of this and then rebranding it as something different. I mean, yeah, they have teams, but none of them, no one gives a shit about any of them. You mentioned Alba Fire and Island Dawn. They dusted them off for a week to give them a shot, and they lost the, the I think it was Katana Chance and Caden Carter. I don't think it was the Kabuki Warriors. I think it was Chance and Carter about a month or two ago. No, they lost the Char- Carter and Chance. Yeah. Okay, yeah, that was back when they were champions. Have not seen them since. And prior to that point, we had not seen them in months. Like, what's at least they're they're singles performers. They may not be on TV all that much, but I mean, there's a better chance of them getting TV time than if they're a team and they're not challenging for the titles. The, the team of the week, essentially. I mean, that's just no one cares. I think there's more opportunities for a mid card title there that travels across Raw, SmackDown, and maybe NXT as well. I completely agree with you there. No, yeah, I mean, I just, I think he tried, you have to realize it's not working, and you just gotta rebrand them as a singles belt, and put on someone that's over, and then give these women a singles push, and I think it'll work better than these tag teams. Like I said, I just feel like, even with someone like Fire, like Dawn, I don't think she's that good, so, not to hurt her feelings, but I don't think she's that good either, but like, Elba Fire's being wasted, she's so good, she was so good in NXT UK, with her matches with Tony and Rhea, and just like being the head of that division, and then now she's not even on TV, and they're tag team that no one gives a fuck about, and like I said, she actually had a decent showing, I think they had like a battle royal, and she's, it was not the Royal Rumble, I feel like she was in a battle royal for something too, yeah, maybe it was you're a right, tag man. team battle royal, was it a tag team battle royal, and the winner got like, a chance, she, like, Don got dumped immediately, yeah, but she actually was, was in that? there for a while. No, 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 it was the Battle Royal for, uh, Elimination Chamber. Oh, that's wait. That's what it was. Battle, was there Battle Royal yep. for Elimination yes. Chamber? It was, that's over, that's over Kill got in. Oh, the Last Chance one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Last Chance Battle Royal. She was actually, Don got tossed in seconds, but Fire was actually in there for a while, and I'm like, okay, and then we haven't seen her since, like, She's so good. Like, I don't understand how they're not using her. I, I, that's one of the things that blows my mind. Yeah. Again, they have a lot of women, and you can't use everyone, but if you have another championship that you can actually defend against, I think there's a better shot of it. I don't know. I just think there, you could you could definitely see... I, I could definitely see her being on TV more if they had, like, contenders matches for a mid-card women's title as opposed to tag team titles that they're, at this point, not going to win. I don't really give, give a shit about their unholy union or alliance tag team anyway. It's just... I like Dawn, but I'm sorry. I like Fire. I don't. Dawn does nothing for me personally. She never has. But um, no, I agree. They're completely wasting her right now, among a few other women. But her more egregiously than probably anyone else. She's maybe had what two SmackDown matches in the past six months. I mean, what a waste. Yeah, exactly. Especially someone that was like a great champion in NXT UK. So it's like she has a proven track record. That's another thing that just kind of blows my mind. Yeah, I don't even know why you bother to call them up if you have no plans for these people. Um, I mean, that's a that's that's a question as old as time. But I feel like that might have been more of a Vince thing, or they felt like they needed teams, even though. I was gonna say, I feel like she didn't she get called up to NXT 2.0 like right around the time that Vince kind of took over because that's when they changed her name and everything. She was in NXT. No, uh, yeah, actually, you're right. She got, yes. she, yeah, she got brought in right before NXT 2.0 because she was Kylie Ray for a while, and then it wasn't until like a few months later they changed their name. But you are right, though. She was. Remember, she actually, I think it was, 
You know what? You know what I was reminded of. She was actually one of the challengers for the NXT Women's Championship at Stand and Deliver two years ago. They did a four way with Mandy Rose. This is so fucking dumb. But remember that she and Io or Io Shirai at that point they won the Women's Dusty Tag Team Classic. But instead of challenging for the tag titles, they said, hey, we're going to cash this in collectively for an opportunity at Mandy's title at the next pay-per-view. I'm like, that made absolutely no fucking sense. But that's how she ended up in that match. Because I remember seeing her when I left the show and I texted you. I walked right by her outside of the arena. But yeah, she was doing stuff in NXT. And then towards the end, they put her with Dawn. And then just no one gave a shit at that point. Yeah, I honestly don't remember that, but I mean, it sounds it sounds familiar. It sounds really dumb, so it sounds about right. That sounds like something they would have done in NXT 2.0 at the time. Um, Intercontinental Championship Gauntlet match on Monday night. I thought it was a great match. I thought they executed it well. Uh, Sami Zayn ended up winning. They did not pivot to Chad Gable, despite the great video package they played for him earlier in the show. Listen, I agreed with you for for a while as far as like it's got to be Sammy because Chad they have not really heated up at all, but they've heated him up in recent weeks. Yeah, he beat Ivar two weeks ago and that was it. What did he fucking do? But like the promos and video packages alone kind of made it seem like they were going in that direction, and then they just went to Sammy instead. Who yes is the objectively bigger star. I get it. It's gonna still be a great match. I'm not booing Sammy. People are like, oh, who gives a shit about this match? I mean, then you're just kidding yourself. Sammy gets a match at Mania and that's cool as he should, but. Do you think they made the right call here, or do you think they should have gone with Chad or someone else in the spot against Gunther at Mania for the Intercontinental Championship? No, I mean, I'm still on Sammy. Like, so I think I like what they've done with Chad lately. But they did the same thing. I don't know if it's like Triple H's new method of booking. They did the same thing with Jey Uso. They had this amazing video package, like kind of like going over his career and like, oh, how are you going to win the belt? And then he lost it. And then they did the same thing with Chad. And they're like, oh, my God. And then he lost it. So I don't know if they're just trying to like kind of like fluff up a baby face to get the fans even more behind them but I like what the work they did like I said they didn't really do too much in the ring he beat Ivar okay but I think like these video packages definitely helped um I mean I think the whole time the story was clearly Sammy versus versus uh Gunther just cause he was like I need something to do at Wrestlemania da, 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 da. so I don't hate Chad not getting in but I think like I said they kinda like heated him up just to lose just like kinda like took the air out of most people they did. I mean, I don't think they pivot to Gable being in the match or incorporating him or whatever, but, um, you know, they did a really good job with that video package explaining why it means more to him and why it's got to be him. And Do you think there's a chance that they didn't go with Gable? And again, they, I, you know, Sammy they could have found a different match for. But do you think there's a chance that the plan was always to have Gunther retain at Mania? And if that plan hasn't changed, then they don't want to have Gable win the belt. I mean, you can't give Gable another shot without him winning. I mean, you, you just can't. I mean, he can't go to Mania and lose again. I mean, that would be ridiculous. He's got to win. So do you think the idea is to have him retain and then he maybe, like Liv Morgan, maybe I'm an idiot, maybe I'm just speaking out of my ass here, but do you think there's a chance that he could win it after Mania instead? Not the night after, I'm just saying at some point down the road. Yeah, it's definitely possible. Um, I just feel like, I don't know, like I said, I don't even think Sammy has to be the one to beat Guther, so it's like you said, I don't think it's like end-all, be-all. I think there's a good chance Chad could w- be the one to finally beat Guther, just not at WrestleMania, so I'm not like overly against it, because um, like I said, I don't think Guther has to lose. I don't really think Sammy has to be the one to beat him, so it could be another one, like you said, with Liv. Maybe they're not getting the title match now, but down the road they get the win. Yeah, it's the same thing with Sami Zayn, too. I I agree as far as if he were to win, I would not hate it. Like, it's the same thing with Becky, where if she wins, I don't hate it because she hasn't held the championship in a long time. It's been a few years. But I just feel like that spot can go to someone else that could benefit more like a Liv or a Chad Gable. I guess I'm just an underdog guy. I don't know. I guess I would just rather see those people win. But, you know, listen, if Becky and Sami win a mania, nothing against it. That's totally fine. Um, that that should be a, a great match regardless. So I hope it, 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 Chad Gable's not ending up on the card. For anyone asking, like, oh, where does he end up now? Oh, he ain't doing shit in Mania. Because I don't even think Alpha Academy are advancing on Monday. I think New Day are winning that match for sure. Um, but yeah, he, he just will not be in Mania. He'll probably be in the Battle Royal and get tossed out in five minutes, <laughs> if that. So I hate to say that because I love the guy and I love this journey, but that's just the spot they find themselves in. Uh, you got a couple more minutes here to talk about Mercedes, or should I let you go? I got a couple more minutes. Well, let me ask you about the Mercedes thing. I, I, I mentioned we'll talk about Dynamite. We can't really do a full-on review. I don't have a, I don't have a ton of time in the left, but do you get to ask you about the big moment from last night? As far as how it came off, because the promo itself I saw mixed reviews on. I didn't really care about the promo. 
Um, it was a pretty basic promo. I don't think she had to go out there and spill her heart out, but she mentioned that she was gone and, you know, she's the CEO and take a shot every time she uses one of her catchphrases, you'd be dead. But, I mean, the reaction came off extremely well. I mean, they, they treated her like a big star, as you would expect them to in Boston. I assume that will translate to future shows going forward. And we also saw her pop up at the end to close the show, helping Willow against uh, Julia Hart and uh, Sky Blue. So, your thoughts on the uh, mercedes Monet uh, debut last night on Dynamite? I don't mind it. Like I said, I'm not, I've just come out straight off. I'm not the huge Sasha fan. I'm um, just to go out, just to go there. But I didn't, I didn't hate it. Like when they, when they panned to the crowd to start the show. Obviously, you were there, so you didn't know that. But like when they started the show, they just got panning to the crowd. And it was like AEW. They're just cheering AEW, whatever. And then obviously they start playing the music. I knew it was her because I'd never heard the music. Yeah. So yeah. she had, like you said, a great reaction. Obviously, I think everyone knew it was going to be her. Um, the promo, like you said, it wasn't. I wouldn't say it was like the greatest promo of all time, but it's not really what it was really meant for, anyways. Uh, so I kind of have her back on that. Like it was more like I'm here. Uh, she's all elite. They throw the graphic up. Um, I guess she didn't really. I mean, she didn't really kind of like say her motivations for being there. Like yeah, she, no, she loves wrestling, and mm-hmm. and she loves wrestling, and the people. And last time she was in TD Garden, she main evented or uh, the pay per view, and she lost. I saw <laughs> Charlotte Flair and a fucking Hell in a Cell. I'll never forget. But um, no, like I said, I think it was just kind of getting her motives. I wish she kind of gave us a little bit more. But like you said, it's not like. I don't know. I wish she kind of, like, put the women over a little bit more. Like you said, like, she could show up later in the show, but, like, I don't know. I'm, I'm just interested to see what they do with her. I feel like with a lot of these people they bring in, and I feel like she should be, like, a big, big star for them just because she is a big women star in general. But, I don't know, I just feel like when it comes to these people, they they have a good debut, and then the rest is kind of, like, underwhelming. So I hope they utilize her to her potential because I think she is a big get and a big star for them. Uh I just kind of hope they have a direction for her because, I mean, the women's division's kind of been hindered, and I think, she's not that she's like the end-all, be-all, but I think it's a good start for them to kind of like get back on track. It's just, they just need to use her correctly. Um, and obviously, coming back in Boston, I mean, it's her hometown. She's not, she probably won't get a bigger reaction than that. Like, I understand doing it, but I kind of set expectations, and then when every other crowd's not as big, like head over heels for her it kind of comes off a little less but i know tony likes doing like the hometown debut did the same thing with punk twice so i don't hate the move but i feel like the reactions are just unfortunately get small just because the crowd's gonna be smaller and it's not boston yeah that is true i mean if they have i mean the crowds are definitely not going to be as loud or as big as they were last night in the garden and you know reportedly they put nine thousand people in there i don't know the exact number i didn't count the amount of people in the building but even before the show started during the Ring of Honor tapings. I, it was a pretty full building. I mean, I got to give credit for that. Um, will they be able to pull that the next time they're in the Garden for a non-special show? Because that was only their second show there, and the first one was Blood and Guts. So if it was like a regular Dynamite, would they do that amount of people? Probably not. As far as the amount of people they do for Dynamite, if there's less people in the building, as long as they're vocal, then that's fine. I mean, CM Punk got some amazing reactions in that company, even when they were filled with only a couple thousand people. Because they were a vocal bunch, and that was kind of the, you know, one of the better parts of AEW back in the day was the fact they had, um, you know, they had a few people in the arena, but they were pretty loud and whatever. With Sasha, you're right. She didn't really say what she wanted to do, but she did come back out of the end during the women's main event. And the women only main event because Sasha was there. Do you think we can get used to more women's main events on these shows? Do you think it's going to have an actual impact on the division, I guess is my point? I mean... <laughs> Say division. Are you saying division or company wide? Like, do I think the ratings are gonna get much better for women's wrestling on for AEW? No. Do I think it'll help the women? I don't know how it couldn't help. Yeah. Um, I think she's clearly the best worker they have now. So theoretically, everyone should be getting better working with her. I mean, I just there isn't the problem. I feel like with her is there isn't a lot of other like top top talent for her to fa- like besides like Tony. Statlander, I mean, people love Willow. I'm not the biggest Willow fan, but besides them two, for me, it's, I mean, I guess you could say, like, Ruby, who I don't even know where she, I think she's on a date with, like, Angela Parker or something, but I don't fucking know. <laughs> and then, like, Soraya's fucking, I don't even know where she, I haven't found, seen her in a while either, so. Um, I think, like you said, I think it's a good start. I just, they just need a book of credit, because like I said, I think once she faces Tony in the top-tier women, it's like, what do you really do with her? Yeah. Um, 
But, I mean, like I said, I like the attempt. I like the attempt, and we'll, we'll see what happens. Yeah, no, I agree. It's all a matter of how they followed it up. I, I would not, I'll tell you right now, I would not put her right in the ring with Julia Hart right away and have her win the championship. Willow literally pinned Julia, I believe. Not even Sky Blue. I think she pinned Julia in a tag team match at that last pay-per-view in the pre-show. So, I mean, they, they have to give Willow a shot first before they give it to Mercedes, but I wouldn't even put the melt on. I know Mercedes is the biggest star there now, male or female, I get that, but... I don't know. To just kind of bypass bypass your plans by putting it on the big star within a month. I would say the same thing if she beat Tony too. I mean, I wouldn't jump right into that. I feel like you got to give it more time. If these power rankings are worth anything, she would not get a title shot within the next couple of months anyway. But I think they already threw the power rankings away. I don't think they've updated them in like a month. So the power rankings they made such a big deal about bringing back. They haven't even <laughs> they haven't even used them since like late February. But whatever. Um, I would still give the TBS championship to Willow, but, you know, they might just put it right on Mercedes right away. And I know, I, I see what you're saying. I don't want people to think, oh, if they don't put the belt on her right away, then they're misusing her. No, I feel like they can give her a big-time feud and not have it. Like, when they had Soraya come in, she shouldn't really be champion anyway, but she came in and feuded with Britt Baker, and it was like a big deal for a while. They could do something similar with her. That's not the TBS championship. But, you know, she's a great asset regardless. Definitely the division. Will she add to ratings and stuff for last night? I would I would, no. I would, I would hope so. Long term, probably I mean, for not. for last night, it probably will. Long term, I don't think so. I don't think I anyone's going to. I mean, last week they had Osprey and Okada. They're the worst ratings they've had in forever, so. Yeah, I mean, I just don't think, unless it's maybe the that Rock. Quit? That's what I don't get. What'd you say? How did last week when they had Okada and Osprey have like the worst ratings they've had in, in like a long time? I don't even know how that even equates. Well, yeah, I mean they, they advertised. I'm not. De- I'm not defending them. I'm just saying they didn't. They didn't advertise Okada. But I think it's more about the rating for last night had to have gone up because they advertised Okada, they advertised Osprey, and they basically advertised Mercedes Monet. But I mean these guys will be on the show every single week. So, yeah, I mean, you're right about last week, but it goes forward every week because these, these three individuals specifically will probably be big parts of Dynamite going forward. If the ratings go down or they but, don't improve, then they don't make a difference. I don't think anyone's going to be a difference maker. Yeah. I mean, I also just felt like after Revolution, like a lot of people were talking about how great of a show it was. I figured they'd still, even, especially, like you said, not everyone was advertised, but like people were talking about like how great the show is. I figured they'd get a bump there and it, it didn't really seem like that happened. So yeah. Yeah. I'm not quite sure. I mean, like you said, there's stuff I like, there's a lot of stuff I don't like. I'm not really sure exactly how you make it. Like you said, I don't, I just feel like they're stuck in a spot. I don't really know how you get much, like, I just feel like they just have the niche audience and if that's what they have, that's what they have. I just, like you said, I feel like they always bring in these people and like, oh, game changer, new. I just don't know what else they need to do to like get a bigger. F- I don't think they, there's anything they can do. I, I don't. I don't know. I just feel like it's tough, and they keep bringing in all these people, and it doesn't really seemingly like Punk was probably the only person that really kind of like jumped up stuff. And obviously, like he hadn't been he hadn't wrestled in ten years, so yeah, like, yeah. yeah, and he had a massive following. And it's like now, it's like I don't know. Even at the end of his run in AEW, they weren't getting a million views. So I'm not quite sure. I, I, I mean, not like the views really matter, but I just feel like it does hinder the company from being bigger than it is. I mean, this is a whole separate conversation. I know I got to let you go, so I'll keep this. I'll keep this short. But you know, the comments came out yesterday from Osprey. I listened to the interview. He mentioned in Talk is Jericho that. WWE made him an offer, which I'm not sure, <clears throat> I mean, I guess maybe through the grapevine they could have. He wasn't officially a free agent before he even signed with AEW, so I'm not sure how deep the discussions were, but he mentioned the offers between the two companies, not literally what the what the offers were, but he said AEW's blew WWE's out of the water. And then you throw that into the fact that Okada is reported to be making, I mean, I don't know if I believe this, $4.5 million a year, American dollars. I mean, I don't know if I believe that. Maybe that's true. It could be $4.5 million total over three years. Again, like I said, we don't know. But I saw comments from people saying, this is why WWE is going to fail with free agency in the future, because they're not offering big-time money to these big-time free agents. Listen, dude, the company's as hot as it's ever been right now for WWE. And if they have these people like Tiffany Stratton, Braun Breaker, and other 
college athletes coming in and they're going to become big stars. Why the fuck would they pay for Okada to stay in Japan and come on? I mean, I think that I wanted to see Okada and Osprey in WWE, but why would they offer them four and a half million dollars a year or anywhere near that remote amount of money if they can build their own stars for dirt cheap? And again, they can't pay every free agent like shit, obviously. I'm just saying in their case, for them to fly in from Japan or England or wherever they live to come in all the time, for them, they probably don't see it as worth it when they really don't need these people. Okada and Osprey are not going to be immediate ratings changers right off the bat. It's just not worth it. Yeah, I agree. I think you can add, I think you could pay those people a lot of money and they can be big deals, but to say, oh man, they really dropped the ball by not getting Okada or Osprey. Yeah, they did. They, I, I feel like they should have offered them more, but at the end of the day, them not getting Okada or Osprey is not going to make a, that big of a difference long term. It really won't, and maybe it will, but I doubt it would. I mean, it's bigger gain for yeah, AEW than, than AEW. I mean, than WWE. WWE will still be, I would assume, for the foreseeable future anyway, from a business standpoint, thriving regardless. But on that note, I'll let you go. We'll, we'll talk more about it next week, obviously. But, um, you know, nice little talking point there. Have a great one, Mr. Marceau. Enjoy the rest of your week. Enjoy St. Patrick's Day and Sunday, and I'll catch your ass next week, brother. I'll talk to you, bro. I'll talk to you. Adios. Join Graham, GSM Matthews, and RJ Marceau every Thursday as they run down their weekly wrestling rants, offer expert analysis, host exclusive interviews, and more. Subscribe today on all your favorite podcast platforms and never miss an episode of Wrestle Rant Radio.